black rot and white rot of apple. Black and white rot are both caused by the genus Botrysferia. These are fungal pathogens that cause disease in not just apple, but in other plants. So Botrysferia is the genus name. Black rot in particular is caused by Botrysferia obtusa, and white rot is caused by Botrysferia diphidia. Um, both of these pathogens cause primarily cankers or woody stem lesions in apple trees, um, and they can also both cause fruit rot. So most growers are familiar with black rot and white rot as fruit rots, but um, it's the canker disease that we'll be focusing on today. So let's start with black rot. Um, a little bit about uh, the black rot disease. Um, we know black rot as frog eye leaf spot, the leaf spotting. Um, for those who do not spray, for a no spray or for a backyard uh, fruit planting, uh, frog eye is very common. The fruit decay, the black rot, uh, we usually see the symptoms from the calyx in on the bottom side of the fruit, uh, turning that fruit black. And the canker, um, whether the branch canker or the trunk canker, causing um, girdling and resulting dieback. The Botrysferia um, pathogen that causes black rot has a very wide host range. Um, both ornamental fruit and forest trees and shrubs are susceptible to infection by this pathogen. In general, optimal temperatures for infection and for fungal activity, 68 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit and about 8 to 12 hours of wetness. So that can be rain, dew, fog, or needed for this pathogen to be active, to be infective. So in general, um, the black rot pathogen um, will sporulate from primarily from cankers in the spring or from mummy fried fruit that are still hanging on the tree. So early in the spring, as temperatures reach those optimal conditions, um, spores will be produced. Some of the first infections occur on uh, newly emerging leaves and the sepals uh, on the bottoms of newly emerging fruit. Leaf spots stay generally small, an eighth to a quarter of an inch diameter, um, and they'll typically have a purple margin and those tan centers that make them look like the eye of a frog. Um, fruit rot, um, again, the sepal end becoming infected, the fruit will rot from that bottom end. And this is a pretty firm rot. So this is um, the opposite of what we'll see in white rot. So this is going to be a, a very firm rot. Again, it's black in color, hence the name black rot. Um, early infections, um, very early infections can result in mummified fruit. And these are small fruit that kind of get dry and hard and rem remain on the tree, whereas the later infections are going to cause that black rot, that classic black rot symptom that we know so well. Most importantly, the black rot pathogen causes infections of stems, branches, um, usually at some sort of wound or pruning cut. Um, and this, that's what this image is showing is that you can see that um, branch union right there in the center where that uh, fungus got in and then spreading. Um, so um, almost always a wound is, is where um, this infection is going to occur. The cankers will start out as sunken, kind of reddish, and each year expanding. Um, and as that expansion occurs, um, the canker will turn dark and black. Um, so again, we've got the black fruit infection and kind of that black cankering, um, but that you'll see those concentric rings, and those are annual rings. Every year as that pathogen becomes active, you'll see that callusing. So that is uh, pretty typical of the black rot canker. So now let's take a look at white rot. Um, white rot is... Um, Another caused by another Botrysferia canker or a Botrysferia uh, fungus, and uh, we sometimes call this one bot rot in short for Botrysferia. I do caution against using bot rot because um, I've seen situations where both diseases were called bot rot by accident. So let's just call this one white rot. Um, white rot disease causes a fruit decay, um, and if you look at this image, the one to the left. 
um, you'll see that very soft, um, liquidy rot of the fruit. Um, that is typically what the fruit decay would be. Um, some people call this the bag of applesauce, so very slimy and very soft and mushy on the inside. The canker is a classic uh, lesion on a stem or trunk, um, and which will lead to girdling and branch dieback. We do not have a leaf spot associated with this uh, pathogen. The host range is wide, just like the uh, black rod pathogen, ornamentals, fruit trees, forest trees, and shrubs, so we have a very wide host range. Optimal temperatures for the white rot pathogen are much higher, 80 to 90 degrees. This will be a later season degree uh, disease, and we also see white rot a lot more in the southern and southwestern part of the state than we do in the central and eastern part of the state. Um, and that's just an indication of overall summer temperatures. So the white rot pathogen sporulates in springtime or spring and summer as temperatures begin to warm. It will sporulate or produce spores from cankers um, and those cankers are those woody stem lesions. Um, it can cause twig and branch dieback, particularly if young tissue is infected. Um, it sometimes we'll see that branch die back or that tip die back um, in certain situations, maybe if the weather is conducive for infection um, while plants are actively growing. Um, again, often um, most growers notice those fruit infections. Um, fruit infections will begin as spots that are um, round, usually with a red halo. And those typically occur on the hot side of the fruit. So the fruit that is exposed to heat and exposed to some of that sun scald. If infe infection typically will occur a little bit earlier in the season, then we actually see the symptoms. So as temperatures start to warm up, as we start to hit that 80 or 90 degree mark, fruit can become infected, but we might not see those spots. We might not see those rots until later in the fruit development. And um, what we do see on the outside is um, what appears to be some um, smaller fruit lesions. But in fact, once infection occurs, that infection will go to the core. And then from there, the internal components of the apple will rot. So um, what seems like a very quick symptom development is actually um, it is what we're not seeing is that rot going on on the inside. And like I said earlier, what eventually happens is we kind of have that um, bag of applesauce, if you will. So a very soft, liquidy rot that eventually occurs as that entire fruit becomes decayed. Most importantly, again, um, with both of these rots, but the white rot um, canker um, will cause uh, branch infections. Um, infection will occur through wounds, especially fire blight infections. So these are weak pathogens, they're opportunistic pathogens, both of them, and they are going to enter woody tissue through some type of opening or some type of wound. And uh, white rot is notoriously um, introduced to plants through fire blight infections. The kangaroos are typically sunken, orangey brown, um, and usually pretty shallow. They can be slimy or they can appear water soaked. Um, so not a deep wound, so it usually stays on the surface. So let's, let's make a little bit of a comparison. Black rot versus white rot, what is the difference? Well, first of all, um, canker symptoms for the two diseases are usually not distinguishable. So we can't look at symptoms in the orchard and we can decide which of the two diseases we have. That is something that needs to be done by examining the spores and the reproductive structures. And that is a microscopic um, examination. Uh, fruit rots um, are usually the indicators of the problem are usually indicators of a larger problem if there is in fact a, a an establishment of these fungi in the, in the orchard. 
Uh, usually in the springtime, um, the initial spore production and spread for a new season will begin in tankers in the springtime. So what's really important is that we strategically remove those cankers and we remove those um, we remove those um, infective plant parts from the orchard. Of course, not throwing them down. Sanitation is really important. We're literally removing that, that sporulating tissue from the orchard itself. Both of these pathogens are opportunistic, meaning they cannot penetrate healthy, uh, rigid plant tissue. They cannot uh, penetrate through tree bark. They have to be let in, if you will. So there must be some type of wound or some type of opening for these very small and very tender uh, fungal spores to be able to enter um, a tree bark. In general, fungicides will uh, can protect fruit. They will not protect or they will not manage canker. So once a canker develops, fungicides cannot get into that tissue and suppress or eliminate um, the fungus. So um, the key here is to prevent infection in the first place because once a canker develops, fungicides are essentially not effective. So how do then we manage cankers? Well, first of all, we're preventing infection in the first place. We're protecting our young plants. We're protecting our, heavy, our healthy plants at all costs. We're eliminating plant stress and open wounds so that the fungus cannot get in in the very first place. And that includes managing insects and diseases like fire blight so that, we, so that these fungi don't have an opportunity to enter. And then we're also using sanitation. We're being very clean as to not spread pathogens around the orchard. When we do prune, we're not throwing prunings down in the middles. We're actually hauling it away. So we are keeping things clean and we are uh, reducing at all costs the amount of inoculum or fungal spores that are um, available for new infections. Once, you, once uh, there is infection in the orchard, um, it is very difficult to eradicate the pathogen, but removing cankers and hauling them away, again, not throwing um, any clippings or prunings down in the centers of the, um, of the rows will um, really help reduce that load. So what the goal is, is to remove that pathogen altogether from the orchard. Uh, totally, er total eradication is usually not possible, but it is absolutely possible to severely limit the amount of that inoculum that is there. So pruning is really the most effective means for management of uh, black rot and white rot cankers. So let's talk just a little bit about how to make a pruning cut. Um, in the orchard situation, we typically don't make um, proper pruning cuts, or at least not to benefit the health of the tree. So let's take a horticultural look at how to prune a tree in general. So when we prune a tree, um, we want rapid healing. And the, the goal here is to prune a branch at the branch union. So that's where the branch joins either another branch or the trunk and to make that cut right outside of the branch collar. And the branch collar is that swelling right at the initiation of the branch. And that's where the healing enzymes are, if you will. So a proper pruning cut will begin by taking the one, two cut to just drop the weight off of the um, off of the branch so that there's no ripping or tearing. And the third cut, that's the final and the accurate cut. So cut number three really removes the branch at the margin of the branch collar while leaving the branch collar intact. So the goal here is to have the most rapid callusing so that that wound is open for the least amount of time. And all along, every time we talk about cankers, we tend to say remove the canker 6 to 12 inches below the margin of the canker. And that essentially leaves a branch stub. So I highly recommend, particularly in an orchard situation, 
where there is um, establishment of the black or white rot pathogens is to be able to properly prune, strategically prune trees. And that is not just removing the uh, fungal uh, cankers, but to also um, clean those trees up, make a proper pruning cut and restore the health and vigor of the trees so that you can get a brand new start. So esen essentially this is um, um, reestablishing the orchard. And again, this is especially important if there is um, if there are disease problems. And as I always do, I'm going to close here today and reminding um, everyone to go to your local university uh, website here at the University of Kentucky Department of Plant Pathology. We have a robust um, set of resources um, for not just fruit crops, but for all of our crops. So if you go to our website, um, just simply clicking um, tree fruit and you can find fact sheets, spray guides, um, lots of resources. So I highly encourage you to take a look. And on our website, you'll see um, a variety, again, of fact sheets, including um, two of them that um, are relevant to today's talk. Fruit Diseases of Apple, where I actually cover black rot and white rot and remind you of some of these um, life cycles and optimal conditions um, that, that'll help you as you plan your management strategy. And then Black Rot, uh, the Black Rot publication, Frog Eye and Black Rot. So again, a little bit expanding some of that um, biology and life cycle information that, that really is critical in terms of disease management. So in closing, I remind everyone, no matter where you are, to contact your local extension office. Um, they can give you the most relevant information for your area and in particular, um, the most up-to-date recommendations. Um, all agents in Kentucky are, con are um, in, in contact um, very often with their specialists, not just their plant pathologists, but all uh, specialists. So they can always have a direct line to any uh, anything that's new and um, our county agents always remain up to date. Just to visit our plant pathology website, our URL is plantpathology.ca.uky.edu. And again, that's where you're going to find spray guides and fact sheets and other resources. So uh, please go there and really learn as much as you can. Um, and also follow us on social media. Our handles are always KY Plant Disease. Uh, whether you're looking at Facebook, Twitter, or um, our upcoming Instagram. So again, thank you for your time today, and we uh, hope to see you in a more positive light and not um, in a situation where disease is um, affecting your orchard. Thank you.